Hi, this is Emmanuel from Parsimony. If you're a solo consultant and you occasionally help your clients with data analysis, uh, but you struggle with finding the right tool to be able to do that work, then this video is for you. If you already know a lot about or even a little about a uh, free program called R that's used by many for statistics and data analysis um, and you just want to learn a little bit more about how to use R um, for your specific needs then this video is not for you but be sure to subscribe because I'll be creating R tutorials that go through how to do various things in R. What this video will do is provide you with a conceptual understanding of what R is and why I and many other people use it for data analysis and statistics. Now, I use R for all of my projects because um, people hire me for quantitative services. So most of the time clients hire me to take their data and answer questions that they have. And usually that culminates in some sort of report, either a PDF or Word document. Occasionally people will have me create some sort of like API for them where they're sending data to a program that I created and it's spitting out results. Now when I first came across R, I was in grad school and I took a lot of courses in statistics, but most of the time I used a program called SPSS, which is a very popular program among people in the social sciences. And that's what I did virtually all my work in. And at the time, people that I respected suggested that I look into using this program called R that I had just learned about then. So I downloaded R and I opened it up and this is what I saw on my screen. Um, it was really weird to me. Uh, it was basically just a clear screen with some text here and I didn't know what to do with that. I just stared at it for a while. I looked at some of these buttons up here, um, clicked on them. It didn't really, these didn't make sense to me. Um, you know, I went in here and I started just typing in random stuff. But it just spat back errors uh, so I didn't know what was going on and I got pretty frustrated and I just decided to close it and just ignore it for a while and um, I didn't go back to using R again and the reason I was confused by R is because it didn't really give me much to work with uh, this is in stark contrast to SPSS which um, has a much better user interface you know I could go up and click on analyze to conduct an analysis uh, or um, transform to transform the data and clean the data. And instead, R was really just plain. Um, you have to do a lot more of the heavy lifting in terms of uh, telling R what you want it to do. It's a, it's a programming language. So you have to write out all of your instructions and at the time I just thought that that was ridiculous why would I make myself go through all that work to um, clean data and perform the necessary analysis and create tables and charts and that sort of thing now fast forward several years later and R is completely indispensable for me I use it in every single project that I work on and there are a few really important reasons that I rely on it so heavily and so many other people that have expertise in data analysis and statistics rely on it so heavily. Although this video focuses on the conceptual understanding of what R is and why it provides so much of a benefit, um, I think it's important to quickly talk about the fact that R is free. So I mentioned before that I heavily relied on SPSS and a lot of people that come from a social science background um, have experience using SPSS and they often got SPSS for free or very cheap while in school. But once they leave school, they realize that it's quite expensive. As of the time of this recording in November of 2021, you go on SPSS website um, you'll see that there are 
uh, different tiers for subscriptions and they have it priced out by whether or not you're getting the base package and then adding on other functionality um, and of course with that additional functionality the price increases but um, you know it can range from a hundred dollars a month per user uh, up and that hundred dollars per month will really only get you some basic functionality in terms of statistical analysis in contrast R is scalable um, it, you can install various packages that have been created by other users um, to allow you to do very complex statistical analyses um, and a whole host of you know uh, creation of graphs um, uh, tables generating word documents I mean it's an ever-expanding list of functionality that you can execute in R to provide the conceptual understanding of what R is, I want to use this analogy. Uh, let's say you've been invited to a wedding. And you remember that um, last year when you went to a wedding, one of many weddings you went to last year, you got lots of compliments on your hair, the clothes you were wearing, your necklace, just everything. And, and that, you know, that made you really happy. And so you, you think back and you're like, you know, um, I'd like to wear the same thing. It's a hypothetical example here. Um, and you remember that you wore uh, a particular outfit, a particular yellow dress from a specific designer that, you know, you have in your closet. Um, you also remember that you wore a particular necklace. Um, you also recall that you went to your uh, favorite uh, salon, got a specific haircut from your favorite um, stylist. You remember that you wore a particular lipstick from uh, a particular company. Maybe you've got a phenomenal memory and you remember the exact shampoo and air conditioner that you used and of course you did all of these things in preparation for the wedding in a specific order. So um, to be able to recreate the look that you want to recreate, uh, it would have been helpful if you had written everything down at the time. And that might sound silly, but what if you knew that if you had written all of the steps, uh, you know, each of the things that you wore in the detail that you wore them in, what if after you had written all of that, you knew that in the future you could simply, uh, you know that you could create a button that you could press and all of that would happen within seconds you'd be ready for the wedding in the exact way that you wrote down within seconds and that's essentially one of the main benefits that i see in r and why i use it um, uh, now i'll give you a more concrete example of this uh using myself so let's say, you know, I wake up in the morning and I am not ready at all, obviously, for the wedding. Um, you know, I may have my glasses on, but I, that, that's it. I just woke up and we will call that version of me dirty me. Now, um, let's say that the first thing that I do to get ready for this wedding is that I brush my teeth. So um, we can use this example here where, where we take dirty me and we apply this function called brush teeth so this function just takes some object in this case it's me dirty me and it does something to it in this case we'll say that this function brushes my teeth and after that function is done doing that to dirty me um, we can save the result and that's what this arrow means we'll save the result and we'll give that new version of me a name and we will call it dirty me with clean teeth. I'm just trying to be very explicit here about these steps. And so let's say the next thing we need to do or I need to do is get myself a haircut. And so I'll use this function called haircut. And this function called haircut will cut the hair of the object in here, which is a version of me that we named here dirty me with clean teeth and after applying that haircut function um, we'll save the result 
which will then be nice hair. I will call it nice hair, but still dirty me. So this version of me has already had my teeth brushed, right? That was done here. And then I put that result of me that was still dirty in here in the haircut function. And so this version of me has a haircut and nice clean teeth. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll put this version of me in the shower function because I'm still dirty and so I need a shower. And so this shower function will give this version of me a shower and the end result we'll call clean and naked me because of course I haven't gotten dressed yet. So that is the version of me that has gone through and had my teeth brush, gotten a haircut and a shower. Let's make this last step um, where I get dressed and we'll use the get dressed function on clean and naked me. So we'll put clean and naked me in the get dressed function that will get me dressed and then I'll call the result wedding me. And so if we look at what wedding me looks like, wedding me looks like this. Okay. So after, you know, I started out here as dirty me went through each of these steps through the help of all these functions. And then at the end of it, end up as wedding me. Now to illustrate one of the benefits of R, um, let's say, you know, I have all of this written out. And so I'm able to simply run, um, all of this code and go from dirty me to wedding me. But I've decided that I actually want to wear a different suit. I want everything to stay the same, but I want to wear a different color suit and tie. So because I have all this written out, I can go in and change just the part that has to do with getting dressed. So that would be this line here where I have the get dressed function and I took the clean and naked me and applied the get dressed function. But let's say I have some options within this function where I can specify the suit color. And so now I'll say, you know, I want the suit color to be gray and I want the tie color to be uh, pink and white stripes. And, and then I want to apply all of that to the clean and naked me object um, to create wedding me. And so I've just made the change to this line and then I can execute all that. And then it'll give me a different version of wedding me that has everything else the same, except that now my suit color is different and my tie color is different. That's one of the important benefits of R is that you can go back and make a change to one or multiple steps while retaining everything else. And you still have that added benefit of being able to repeat everything and do so very quickly in the future. Now, R won't um, give you a shower or cut your hair, you know, or brush your teeth, but uh, it does have a tremendous amount of functions and um, tools to be able to uh, manipulate data, perform analyses, um, calculate statistics and do all of that. So now let's use a more realistic example for what R is and how you can use it. So instead of the dirty me, let's say you have dirty survey data and you're helping a client analyze the survey data. So you might take a data set that you have in Excel and put it into R and then call it dirty survey data. And, you know, one of the steps you could have is that you could filter the rows so that maybe you only want to look at data in the dirty survey data um, where the city is Minneapolis, where the respondent said that they live in Minneapolis. And so you use this filter function, which does just that. It filters just the rows that you care about. You apply that to the dirty survey data and then you tell it on what columns or variables you want to filter and what the condition is. So here we're saying filter the dirty survey data by the Q4 city column um, such that you're only keeping the rows where Q4 city is equal to Minneapolis. So um, once you apply the filtering of this data set um, that is called dirty survey data, 
such that you are keeping only the rows where the respondent said Minneapolis for the city question. We'll take that result and call that Minneapolis only survey data. And let's say the next step you want is to um, select certain columns. So you don't care about all of the columns for one particular analysis you're going to do. Let's say you only care about gender and ethnicity um, because you want to create a table um, so that you can show the client uh, what that distribution looked like by gender and ethnicity for those people that responded to the survey. And so you take the um, Minneapolis only survey data and you use the select function to just select certain columns and you specify which columns you want to select. So you're going to select just the Q2-gender column, the Q3-ethnicity column. And then you'll save that smaller data set, which now is filtered for only rows where the respondent said they live in Minneapolis for the Q4 city question. And you're only looking at the gender and ethnicity questions or the responses to those questions. Saving that reduced data set and you're calling that Minneapolis demo data. And then let's say the last step you have for this particular small example is to create a table of gender and ethnicity. And you can do that using this table function. Um, so you take the Minneapolis demo data, which only includes gender and ethnicity columns for respondents who said that they were in Minneapolis. And so you create a table and call that Minneapolis demo table. And if you take a look at it, it might look like this, where Minneapolis demo table is a table of gender and ethnicity. And so after doing something like this in R, you have uh, effectively automated the process of creating a table of ethnicity and gender for your data set. Now, if your client did this survey on a regular basis, maybe once a year, and they want you to put together a report, and one of those things that you put in the report is a table of gender and ethnicity, having code like this would allow you to run that code in the future with the new data set and have the same results you know, with updated data in the matter of seconds. And you could see how this could be beneficial because as your code gets longer and longer and you're doing a lot of different things, you're creating charts using code, you're creating tables using code, etc. You're able to automate the entire analysis and report writing potentially. I hope this video was helpful in giving you a conceptual understanding of what R is and um, helping you better understand why it might be helpful to you as a solo consultant if you occasionally have to perform data analysis uh, for your clients. Um, and if it piqued your interest in using R for your solo consulting uh, business, uh, please subscribe. I'll be creating R tutorials where I keep them very short. You know, as a solo consultant, I know you're extremely busy and I'll be doing like five minute videos that focus on very specific topics in R how to videos, like how to read in an S uh, SPSS file, um, how to read in a CSV file, how to filter data, that sort of thing. The idea being that you can rely on those videos as you're working on small projects by watching different videos and executing those projects. Thanks for watching.